Hello business owners. Today we're going to take a quick look at the audience attraction 101 worksheet. Now you may have uh, received this worksheet in a course that you are taking um, or a workshop and you may have also received it as a lead magnet. Um, so I want to do this really quick video to show you how to use this because there's a lot of great information in this simple worksheet. So we're gonna go through it really quickly. I'm gonna show you how to use it. And I'm also gonna point out some of the areas that you might wanna think about when you are going through this worksheet. So the main thing that this worksheet is designed to do is help you to understand how your business can attract more of your ideal customers. And the more you can attract your ideal customers, the more you are gonna be able to start seeing and getting results. So use these simple steps to attract the right people to your business. And the thing that you wanna remember is that you wanna zero in and narrow your focus. And as we go through this, it'll be uh, more apparent um, you know, how you can do that. So the first question you wanna ask is who will you sell to? So to attract someone to your business, you need to know who they are. So who is your ideal customer? <clears throat> and what are they looking for? And that is the million dollar question because the more you can give your ideal customers what they're looking for, the more you're going to sell. So the way that you are going to be able to kind of narrow down what your ideal customers are looking for is when you are able to identify the problems, the challenges, the ideas, uh, the information that they may be researching. So say for instance, you have a product and it does a certain thing. Um, there are people out there who are looking for that product more than likely, you know, especially if you have a product that everyone is using or household products or, you know, things that people use on a daily basis. Those are gonna be things that people are probably doing Google searches for. Now, they may be searching for the lowest price. They may be looking for a deal. They may be looking for a high-end product, something that is a little more high quality. Maybe they're not satisfied with whatever they are using, but it's the same kind of product as yours. You wanna capture all those folks, right? Because a lot of times you have products in various uh, price categories. So you may have a value-based product, you may have a middle-of-the-road product, and you may have a high-end product. So someone who's out there doing research on whatever your product is, you wanna, you know, you wanna reach out to those folks, right? And so you wanna understand all of these different areas because people are at various stages of the buying process. So the more you know about your ideal customer and their challenges and the um, ideas and, and information that they might be looking for, the better you're gonna be at creating messaging that will turn visitors into customers. And the next thing you wanna do after you um, have an idea of who you're selling to, then you wanna figure out where those folks are hanging out online and you wanna get the word out. So. You want a way to deliver a consistent marketing message to the people who are a good fit for your business. And so we can help you set up a system that will deliver your marketing messages, uh, messages that are going to attract your potential customers. Once you, are, um, you have that system, that system is gonna feed you a lot of data. And that's why we um, always recommend that you have a, um, a platform that you own and control. Now, there's nothing wrong with using other types of platforms, like there are limited use platforms, different marketplaces, social media, all those places are great, but when you have a platform that you own and control, that means that you're gonna be able to set up your system in a way that it feeds you data about the people who are visiting your business. And so once you start getting the word out to potential customers and you're using this platform that feeds you all this great data, then you're gonna be able to make some uh, really good decisions, decisions that are based on data and not decisions based on your hunches or your feelings or whatever. 
So you're going to be able to measure your results. And when you start setting up, even when you're using things like social media, you can set up things like business accounts. You can um, also use that, you know, platform that you own and control that will give you access to data that will help you learn more about the people that you are interested in attracting, right? So these are the things that you can do to uh, reach your goals. Now, once you measure your results and you start getting all this data, then you want to set up a lead generation system because then now you know who you're selling to, you know how to get the word out and you're, you're using these systems that are feeding you all of this great data, right? So you can use that data to uh, reach out to people who are a good fit. So those, it's really, when you start looking at data, that data is gonna help you to start uh, reaching more and more people who are a great fit for your products and services. And you wanna, want, you, you wanna know uh, more about those folks and you want to not only reach them and have them to follow you on social media, you want to connect with them. And the way that you connect with them is through lead generation. So once you're consistently attracting people to your business, you're gonna need a way to get them to opt in. And when they opt in, that means that they are interested in making a connection with you. So what does that do? That you know really opens up the door for you to start a relationship. It also, um, you know, limits your need to go out and try to find people to talk to about your business, right? You have people when they opt in, they are saying, hey, I want to know more about your business. I want to understand more about your products and I want to uh, potentially do business with you. And so, you know, the ball will be in your court at that point. If, when someone signs up, the ball is in your court to, um, you know, knock their socks off and really give them uh, the information that they need, the products, the services that they need to accomplish their goals. So once you're helping people accomplish their goals, you're really going to start feeling better about your business. You're going to be able to create better relationships. And those relationships can lead to things like more sales, more referrals, more testimonials, uh, more leads, all those things that you want in your business, right? So now on the next page, you are gonna start writing out, you know, now that you kind of have more of this information, um, the information that you need to fill this out, now you're gonna start filling in some of the blanks. So what industry are you in? So now you know um, who your ideal customers are, now you need to kind of narrow down your focus even more by looking at the industry that your products and services fall under. So if you have, for example, a weight loss product, then you may be under the umbrella of health and wellness. Now you can narrow down health and wellness into a lot of different areas. So because weight loss really um, falls under the umbrella of improving health. Like when you lose weight, that helps to improve your health, your overall health. And it also helps to uh, make you feel better about yourself. So it's also going to be under the umbrella of wellness. So um, you want to, you know, just kind of narrow down the industry that you're in. And then you also want to think about your niche. So your niche is going to be weight loss. And that's really, um, weight loss is a sub niche of health and wellness. So your big umbrella niche is health and wellness. And then your weight loss product is going to fall under the umbrella of, uh, wellness or health and wellness. Okay. So then once you have that written down next, you want to talk about some of the challenges that are faced by people in your niche. So some of the challenges of people who are looking to lose weight, you want to think about, you want to sit down and just brainstorm, you know, and maybe you have um, a friend or a family member or your kids or somebody that can kind of sit down with you and you guys can just kind of brainstorm some of the problems, the areas, uh, problem areas, issues, challenges that people in your niche might be facing. So someone who is interested in losing weight 
may have stubborn weight, that weight that just won't, you know, leave. They may have um, issues with maybe weight that's targeted in a certain area of their body. So some people are more top heavy. Some people have all their weight in the middle. Some people have all their weight in the bottom area of their, um, of their body. And so, you know, what are some of the challenges that people have when they're trying to lose weight? Some people have been on diet after diet after diet and nothing has helped. So just think about all those different areas, brainstorm all those different challenges, and then you can kind of narrow down your focus by looking at your product and looking at that um, information maybe that comes with your product. So maybe your supplier gives you some information about your product. You can take that information and kind of narrow down some of the solutions that your product would um, help someone with that is trying to lose weight. And then you can also think outside the box at some of the things that you might be able to offer. So maybe you have a whole suite of weight loss products and maybe you can combine those products to you know, help someone who hasn't been able to get results. Maybe you can combine those to, um, to help someone get better results than they have gotten in the past. So just think about the challenges faced by people in your niche. And then last but not least, you want to describe how your product helps people in your niche. So again, you know, look at your product, look at the labeling, look at the pamphlets that come with it. Look at the uh, stuff on the website that, you know, if you have a supplied website, Maybe your supplier gives you a website where people can go and place their order. Um, you can look at that information. You can look at some of the benefits. You know, think about some of the benefits that people will get when they start losing weight. And um, just, you know, kind of map out how does your product help people in your niche? Um, and the other thing that I wanted to point out about this uh, worksheet is there are hyperlinks in this worksheet. So when you see an area that has the underline and it's uh, colored in blue, you can click on that. And let's just click on it really quickly. It's going to take you to an area of uh, the website, of our website, where uh, you can get more information. So this is an article on how to use your hobbies and interests to find a niche. And you can read through this and get some real insight into, um, you know, how to select a niche. There are also um, some videos that are in uh, this particular um, article. And you can watch those videos and you can really get as much information as you would like when it comes to um, when it comes to selecting a niche. So just keep in mind that throughout this uh, worksheet, there are links that you can click on to get more information. Okay, so describe how your product um, helps people in your niche. And then next we have getting the word um, out. So you'll need a place, a platform, that you can use to get the word out about your product or service. And you want a platform, we always recommend at least, you know, one platform that you own and control. And you can use that platform as a central hub. Now that platform is also, once you get it set up, it's gonna start feeding you data. And you can use that data to make your decisions. So here is an article and helpful video on using free social media platforms to get the word out. So social media is also a great way, it's a free way to get the word out. Now you can also buy um, ads on social media, but here, if you click on this, it's gonna take you um, over to an article that um, shows you how to use social media. You can optimize your social media or lead generation. So again, you can, you know, read this article and there's a video. There's also a uh, checklist that you can download and that is gonna give you a lot of great information as well. Okay, so let's get back to our worksheet. 
Okay, so just, you know, click on these um, links and that's going to take you to some additional information, valuable information that you can use. So does your messaging help you connect with potential customers? So if you're hearing crickets, then that means that there may be something in your messaging that is off. And if that's the case, you need to figure out why. You know, why isn't your message resonating with potential customers? Because that is one of the reasons that you may not be selling. If you're not selling products and services, that might be one of the reasons why. Your messaging may be off. How many people are you reaching and engaging with on your social media platforms? That's something that you should definitely keep track of because you want your social media following to grow. You want to engage with people. You don't want to just, you know, put your social media posts out there and hear crickets. <clears throat> and so when you keep track of, you know, who you're reaching and engaging with, that kind of tells you whether your social media is growing and whether you need to do something different maybe in your messaging. That's another uh, indicator that you might need to be doing something different. Are you current? Are you currently using tools to automate audience attraction? So uh, we can introduce you to some tools that will enable you to set up your social media posts on autopilot. Now, when you can do that, that is going to save you so much time because you can pick a day of the week. You can load up all your social media posts. And this is also one of the ways that you can plan out your post so that you have a targeted message that you're sending every single day. So you're not just randomly posting stuff. You actually have a method to your madness, right? You're actually able to, um, to plan out your posts and really have your social media feed um, have cohesion and consistency and um you know great messaging right so you can definitely if you have questions about that please feel free to reach out and we can show you some of the tools that you can use to automate your social posts so the other thing that you want to do of course is you want to measure your results now we also have um, an article on how to do a social media audit so if you're interested in that you can click there I'm not going to do that just for the sake of time, uh, but you want to write down the way that you measure and track success on your social media platforms. So what does success mean to you? Does it mean more likes, more shares, just more engagement in general? You know, what does success mean to you? And then what did the results of your social media audit tell you? So on the next page, we have a worksheet that you can use to do a social media audit. And then if you want details on how to do an audit, you can click right here. Okay, uh, when you look at the last six months of social media data, are you pleased? And if not, why? Now, that doesn't mean you have to have a zillion followers on every one of the social media platforms. And really when you're starting out or when you are you know, just getting um, into the mix when it comes to social media, it may be a good idea for you to just pick one social media platform and get that down pat and then move on to another because you can be really overwhelmed when it comes to social media, but you definitely want to use social media to start driving traffic to your platform. And then the next question is how can you improve when it comes to attracting an audience. Now here's where you have the social media audit. So you wanna perform these steps on each one of your social media platforms, prioritizing the platforms where your ideal customers hang out. So if you are on a platform where your ideal customers are really not hanging out, then you really don't wanna even be on that platform. I would prioritize, um, the platforms where people in my demographic hang out. And that really goes back to, you know, some of the first questions that we ask, who are you going to be selling to? And when you think about your ideal customer, you really need to break it down. Like what are their ages? Um, where do they hang out online? Um, what is their income level? 
And you're not trying to like profile people. You're not trying to make it so that people, you don't want to exclude a lot of people just based on their demographics because um, the thing that you want to do when you're looking at age and when you're looking at income level, you just want to know, number one, where are your ideal customers hanging out? And some, so some social media platforms tend to gravitate toward older people. Some social media platforms gra gravitate more toward younger people. And so you want to make sure that you're in those places where your ideal customers are hanging out. When it comes to income, you just want to know that someone is able to afford, especially if you're selling a higher end product, you want to know that they are, you know, the people that you're talking to are actually able to, um, to afford what you are promoting. Because if you're talking to someone, if you have an, a high end product and you're talking to someone who can't afford it, then you're kind of unfortunately wasting your time. So it's not about, you know, screening people out just for the sake of their demographic data. It's more, um, you know, making sure that you're talking to the right people who would be a good fit for your uh, product. So how does your social media feed look? So when you're doing your social media audit, you want to take a look at your feed. Does it look random? Are you just posting whatever and you're not really intentional about how your social media uh, feed looks are your posts leading people to valuable content or are you constantly selling without adding value that's a really important question um, how does your profile look and where does it send people so do you have a compelling uh, image text and message on your social media profile are you sending potential customers to a place where they can become a lead learn something new or obtain a freebie are you using keywords and hashtags that potential customers are using to find products like yours? So if you're not using hashtags and keywords, you definitely want to start doing more research so that you can understand which hashtags, which keywords are going to resonate with your audience. And then write down how your messaging is on target with potential customers. And now here is how your social media um, audit is um, should continue. So how is the information in your feed valuable to your ideal customers? And this is important because if you're not providing something that's valuable, then people are not going to necessarily pay you any attention on social media. You want to ask yourself what's in whatever it is that you're posting, what's in it for your ideal customers? If there's nothing in it for them of value, things that they're going to appreciate and uh, want to get, then um, is, you're wasting your time. Is your messaging attracting the right people to your business? So the messaging that you convey can really help to attract either the right people or the wrong people to your business. So you want to attract people who are going to take action. You don't want to attract those folks who are never going to buy, never, you know, never take action with you. People who are just a total mismatch. You want to start attracting those folks who are really um, out there looking for products like yours. Um, are your social media platforms regularly updated and consistent? So if you only post on social media once a month, you're probably not going to get the best results. Are you prioritizing the social platforms that send you the most traffic? So there again, you need to be measuring the data that's being sent your way. So if you have a social media post and you have your primary platform that you own and control set up in the right way, then you're going to be, you know, bombarded with a ton of data. And you want to look at that data to see which social media platforms are sending you the most traffic. So this is a worksheet that helps you to track your social media. So you can write down the name of the platform and the date. And I would recommend doing this maybe once a month for your um, most important social media platform. So how many likes, followers, fans do you have? How many impressions have you received in a week? How many clicks have you received in a week? What is your top performing post, pin, or tweet for the week? Tracking social media continued. Are people liking, sharing, and commenting or, and forwarding your posts, pins, and tweets? 
How much traffic are you getting to your platform from this channel? Are you using paid ads on this uh, platform? What can you do to improve on this channel to get better results? So this is the uh, worksheet that you are given on, um, you know, various, you can get this worksheet in various ways on, um, on my site. And you can also get our um, ebook called Skyrocket Your Business. And in that, um, in that ebook, you also have access, you have access to more information, but this worksheet is also included in, uh, in that workbook. So I think that's pretty much it for this video. I appreciate your time. Thanks for hanging out with me. And I hope that um, I've given you some insight on how to get this information uh, filled in. Once you have it filled in, you're gonna have a plethora of information that you can use to really improve your content and really understand more about who you're selling to so that you can start tailoring your content and your messages and your social media posts all of that stuff can be uh, tailored to the people who you want to do business with. And that in turn is going to help you um, attract more people to your business. So I appreciate your time today. Have a wonderful week and I will talk to you soon.